Hi, I'm Jason Dudley. Welcome to another episode of House Entertainment Sessions. Today, introducing Jerome Six. <laughs> For those who don't know about you, is how long have you been a DJ for? Um, so I started when I was about 15. I'm 30 now, so 15 years. It started, so my dad was a DJ, that's how it started, and then took over the reins from him. Okay, totally understand that. <laughs> Oh, 
yourself to be more than just a DJ yeah man so do you know what it is it's weird because sort of like the promoting and the rise and stuff like that sort of I never really wanted to do it <laughs> but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if I'm being back, it's sort of totally honest it got to a point in my like when I think I was like 18 19 and there was nothing I'm from Enfield there was nothing happening in Enfield to me and the boys were like do you know what, let's do some events then they started happening and it started working started popping off so yeah, man, it's, it's it's working really well. So I'd say that I'm a DJ slash promoter, okay. slash producer, slash entrepreneur, yeah, yeah. slash everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Speak. 
obviously like you said uh, your dad was a dj so i'm assuming that's obviously what sparked your, your interest in being a dj but what triggered you to make your first steps like what made you buy your first set of decks controller so music i was very fortunate obviously so big up my dad r.i.p but what happened was he was a sound man from early so everything was in the house so i was quite fortunate he had vinyls he had cd decks he had he was on radio you must have heard of station of him we'll talk about that off, <laughs> off station we'll talk yes. about that so so he had them old school dub plates and stuff like that and he was just like yeah use them whenever you want so i literally was just messing around at home i remember my cousin nathan there's always me and nathan at home just playing dub plates and just pretending to do live shows and then we just got into it really old tight dj keatley yeah i, I do know station of very well <laughs> Everyone's got a low station. Everyone, Old everyone. School. Everyone's parents and that. If you're from the Caribbean community in North London, especially, you know Station 100%. FM. Hundred percent. Station How would you describe the sound you play right now? See, the thing with, so, how do I explain it? Upbeat, groovy tech house, bit of vocals. Just, I don't really pigeonhole myself. If it's, if the song's nice, I'll play it. If I think people are gonna vibe to it and people are gonna like it, I'll play it. I don't really, when I search for music, when I'm on Beatport, I go through everything. I go through the house playlist, I go through the tech house, the deep house, the afro house. If it's nice, I like to play just upbeat house. I like people to just, when they walk in, they're like, oh, that's Jerome playing. And they drop a little shoulder, cut a two shapes. Yeah, totally. I would like to get to know if I could be the kind of girl that you could be down for. Cause when I look at you, I feel something tricky. That you're the kind of guy that I should make a move on. And if I don't let you know, then I won't be for you. I could be wrong, but
your DJ name, Jerome Six. How did you come about this name? So Jerome is my name, obviously. I've taken that. But obviously, you know, when you're younger, you used to have your little your little crews, little your little tag names. gangs, yeah. your little tag names. So from Enfield, the area was called, our little group was called Level 600. Okay. I was the DJ in the group. So I took the six from 600 and I was used to be called DJ Six. Okay. So that was always my name, DJ Six, DJ Six, DJ Six. Everyone just used to call me Six. And then obviously, as I transitioned from like Funky House into like Main House, I thought, let me change it up a bit, make it a bit more sound nice. So I used Jerome Six. Okay. Love 
you remember your first ever booking? Oh, yes, it was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I had to call my dad for help. Oh, my. <laughs> Mate, it was awful. Where was it? It was in Southgate in a little community hall. I think her name was Keely, her 16th birthday. These times, I was, everyone used to MC, so I was MCing them times. I was messing around with DJing, but I had all the equipment there. Someone was like, oh, can you DJ? I thought, you know what? Yeah, I can do this. I got this. I went there, didn't have a clue what I was doing. Obviously at home, everything was set up. Yeah. So I tried to picture what was done at home, take it there and do the same setup. Yeah. But I took bedroom speakers to a rave. So the sound was bare quiet because these are just little bedroom speakers. <laughs> Literally, I had to call my dad. He had to come down with all the proper things, set it up. The party was nice after that, but literally <laughs> the first like 90 minutes, I was sweating because it was a shambles. Absolute shambles. I walk away, you
Carson, what's been your best moment as a DJ so far? I've had a, I've had a few. I'm quite fortunate in it. Do you know what I mean? Like I was talking to Kai earlier on the way here that obviously I've been invited down here. I've had loads of good opportunities. I love doing stuff like this. I love playing out. I think the best one would probably be um, one dance festival. The first one because you're like 2019. Obviously, I had gone to I've gone to I'm a festival boy, so I do loads of festivals. But I went to one dance festival like every year from like 2014 and then I remember when I got the email saying we want you to play I was buzzing so obviously that was inviting everyone all my boys come couple of my cousins come my girl come it was like you know it's like the first big one where I stepped on the stage I was on about four o'clock but I looked down it was just ram so yeah it was big man shouts to Shannon shouts to AR one dance festival garage nation yeah big that's one probably up. the biggest one yeah man <laughs>
What's been your biggest struggle or hurdle as a DJ so far in the scene? Um, do, 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 do. Within myself, it's probably the producing thing, like getting onto, because I know what sounds I want to make, but producing is hard. Let me tell you, like man's, man's done like five hours on a screen and made nothing. <laughs> I'll do like half an hour and sometimes I'll make something sick. It's just up and down at the moment. So that's a real struggle, but Something that I can't control is probably it's probably something that needs to get spoken on a lot more. Is like for us as a black promoter, as a black DJ, getting onto certain venues and stuff like that, and getting booked by certain people. It's always it's a myth in it. I'll be honest. Like you, it, it, to get rise into certain clubs, they basically they would either take some stuff away from us. Oh, you got to finish earlier, or you can't have that guy in the lineup, or you got to you got to pay more for security. I feel like that's unfair on us, obviously. It's, we, we, me and myself and the team, we always just crack on. We just get on with it, innit? Like, it is what it is. We do what we do. But I feel like that is a thing that not a lot of people know and a lot of people struggle with within the scene. There's people bigger than me and been here longer than me that are going through the same thing. But yeah, man, it is what it is. We crack on, don't complain. Big up the Rise team. We got Rise. 28th of May, that's an exclusive for ya, because that's not even out yet. I hope this that's, that's content gets released in time <laughs> to be coming. <laughs> I hope so. It will, man. I have faith. I have faith. I just wanna fuck that. 
lot of pressure and you're working on, and I do understand. You have no idea how much I understand. But you also don't have any idea how much I love you. I love you so much. I think about you, I feel you in my heart. I miss you. I miss you terribly. I just always wanted someone like you in my life. I love you so much. I can do anything. I can do anything. I just wanna fuck that bitch. Now I'm all up in that ass, bitches. I love you so much. Okay. 
What's your top three DJs of all time? Any genre? Number one, it's got to be my dad, LG Lewis, and the system sounds simple, old school. Um, everyone knows I love Max Chapman. I'm not gonna lie, that's like. He's such a cool guy as well. He's giving me some pointers and producing and stuff like Have that. Have you met him in a rave? I'm not, you know. I'm no, wait. do you know what? I'm, I'm quite shy. A lot of people don't think of him. I'm a quite shy. He was at We Are Festival and I played one time and he was backstage and his manager was like, yeah, come meet him, come meet him. I was so nervous to go meet him because I'm thinking, this is the guy that man idolized for time and he's just there. And he was a bit waved. I was a bit waved as well, but I'm like, yeah, I'll talk to him in a minute. I'll talk to him in a minute and I didn't end up doing it. I'm going to throw a quick spoiler in there, yeah. <laughs> I remember one time we went to one rave in like Fire Voxel and someone's booked Max Chapman and obviously we've been like oh we booked Max Chapman before who's this guy booking him but we went to the rave anyway and all I remember was when Max Chapman saw us hold tight Lance Morgan Lance contact Jerome and tell him this story afterwards <laughs> I remember me and Lance we saw Max Chapman and let's just say he was under the influence yeah he, have you seen how big he is yeah, yeah. He's so slim now, though. Imagine he's slim now. I, 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 I want to some... see, but he's still tall. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was so massive, and he saw us in the rave, and I remember him just being like, "Oh my god, mate!" I swear that was the first time we had like we had this Essex guy raving with us for the whole night in the in the most South London ghetto rave, <laughs> and Max Chapman was rolling with us, and we was just like, "This would have never happened anywhere." But he is definitely a good. Yeah, I've, a good I've heard soul. a lot of good stories about Max. He's just he's he's, he's down for it. He's a proper cool guy. Yeah. He'll help you out. Like I said, he's giving me pointers on producing and stuff. Yeah, man, he's sweet. <laughs>
I would like to know, as a DJ, what is your mission? If you wanted to ever like leave a legacy or a lasting imprint on the scene, the community, you know, what would you like to be remembered by type of vibe? What would that be? I just want to be, everyone always calls me the nice good guy, <laughs> but I just want to be remembered for just playing sounds, innit? Do you know, it's, so when I see someone like Lance, he calls me the sounds man, it's Lance and Jekyll. I just want to be known as a DJ that gets people going. Do you know what I mean? If I walk into a rave and it's kind of flat, Jerome's going to step on and I'm going to lift up the crowd. And that's my main thing. I'll forget everything else. The most important thing is the music and entertaining people. That's what I'm here to do. So I just want to make sure that if the people see me on a flyer, they're like, yeah, I'm going. Jerome's going to get the crowd going. Jerome's going to be lively. Jerome's going to be playing sounds. He's not going to be playing what everyone else is going to be playing because that's one thing about me. I try to, I always try, I'm a serial searcher, like at least three times a week, man's just searching for new songs. I just yeah. want to play new songs, play new music, put out new music. So that's my thing. I just want people to be like, yeah, this guy, he's, he's a good DJ. It sounds very simple, but in a world where there's like 10,000 trillion zillion DJs right now, you know what I mean? I just want to be the standout where people could look to me and be like, yeah, he's cold. You know what I mean? I respect that. <laughs>